Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint another lovely spring flower, Lily of the Valley. So grab your paints and let's get started. Lily of the Valley is one of those rare occasions where I would actually um, recommend using a bit of masking fluid um, because they're these little white flowers and then they have these ginormous green leaves and it's going to be unlikely that you'd end up painting Lily of the Valley flowers without the presence of a very large leaf. So today I'm actually going to be drawing in a few of those little white flowers this is what I'm doing now so I've got my stem and then I'm just finding a few of these lovely little sort of white cup flowers and drawing them in in pencil to be able to then colour in masking fluid just so I can then paint a lovely large green leaf over the top and then we can pull the masking fluid away and not worry. So I'm just going to draw in just the, the lower ones here and then I'm going to pop some masking fluid over the top. So I've just drawn in the flowers that might come into contact with my two leaves and then I've got myself an old brush that I don't mind what happens to um, and a bit of masking fluid in a separate palette and I'm now going to paint in these Lily of the Valley flowers in masking fluid. That's been painted in now and been given about five minutes to dry. Um, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna paint in the rest of the Lily of the Valley that isn't going to be um, needing to be masked so we're just actually painting in the white flowers on the stem and what I've got here up here I've got a, a mixture of sap green and cadmium yellow which makes a lovely light fresh yellowy green and then over here I've got a very dilute mixture of um, burnt sienna, Payne's grey, a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of this mixture. And right now it looks all sort of cloudy over there, um, but the more water that I mix into it, um, it's going to create a lovely translucent shadowy color that is going to be perfect for flowers painted on white paper, white flowers on white paper. So I'm gonna begin at the top um, and at the top of my stems it's going to be a sort of only half formed lily of the valley here so we're going to have actually more of a of a green little bud and I'm using my size zero brush and then as I come down another one of these so you don't often see actually these this stage we normally just see the lovely cascading cascading flowers but okay this time now we will start to put these in it's going to be very pale but as it dries it'll all start to make sense so I am going to begin by painting in a little ball of color here and I just need to take as much sort of liquid off my brush and in a way I might actually go down a size here just get a real fine point of a brush and I am going to now just start shaping the flower with a few little pointy ends and then A little curl because when they're very small at the top they don't they don't fall 100% downwards let's pop another one in so they're just going to gradually start to fall so paint a little circle of the color 
and then use a nice detailed brush, a nice little brush with a point to put in some sort of broader triangles at the front and then just some little curly ones, little curly points at the back and then there we go and I'm very happy if we get a tiny bit of a blend, a bleed going in there. Of course they also fall on the front of the stem too so don't forget about that. Now shaping the front a little bit. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in all the flowers along the bit that there's no leaf and then we can get on with the rest. So we've got all our little flowers just painted in, in a nice um, basic wash stage. And now I'm going to paint in these large leaves. Um, so I've got a size four brush and I'm going to use the lighter color that I was using for some of the stem work for this leaf. And look at that, I can just paint right over the masking fluid flowers there. Okay, and whilst it's still wet, I'm now going to paint in some sap green, but I'm going to use going to use a size 2 brush just to begin and what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by just sort of edging it with some of this nice sap green and then I'm going to start to just add in some texture on this leaf These lines are going to fade and soften. So we're probably not gonna see a huge amount of it as it sort of dries, but this is absolutely lovely. So we just want the curve of the leaf to be followed by those brush strokes. So I'll do it again. So size four, a nice dilute leaf in this sap green cadmium yellow mix so you always start with your lighter color first painting right over the masking fluid area and a size 2 brush just outlining the leaf so by just catching the dry page just outside the painted area it means I get a nice crisp outline and then on the inside it's nice and soft because of the blends And that is why I really wanted to use the masking fluid just so I could paint those leaves as freely as I wished. And now we can continue down the stem. With that lighter color. And again with the sap green and what I'm also going to do is just Paint in a little bit extra there, a little bit more there, and just allow that to bleed into one another. 
Okay, so we just need this to dry 100% and then we can rub off the masking fluid and get some lovely detail on our little flowers. Now that's all dry, I'm just rubbing my finger gently over the masking fluid area to take off the masking fluid and underneath we've got some lovely white flowers which means I can now just paint them in but I don't need to paint in the whole thing now I can use the white maybe as a little bit of a, a highlight and a, just use this as more of a detail low light because being able to actually make the most of the unpainted space is really cool and then of course we've got the stems just lurking in there which we want to be able to paint in nice and pale so yes that's the whole point of, of using the masking fluid is then that you can paint in your nice delicate light colors in the gaps which you wouldn't have been able to otherwise and now the final stages are all about adding low lights to our highlights. So I've got a mixture here of sap green and French ultramarine blue, which make a lovely shadowy mix, but also we haven't really used sap green on its own. So what I can do is with a very small brush, I've got four tenths here, is just add a, an underside, a, a low light of green to each little bud coming off, a little flower coming off. And if I see the top of that flower, I can just add a tiny bit of detail. So that's the first thing I can do. I can also use it to add some detail to the actual buds as well. The stems that are sort of protruding from the leaves give them a bit of darkness from the bottom and then they can sort of emerge what I quite like is that because the bits of paint are still a little bit wet, I'm still going to get a lovely little blend going on every now and then. There are some extra little, little leaves to be seen. So it's just a case of working your way up and down and finding areas where you think a little bit of the darker green would be helpful to tell the story of the flower. And then the flowers themselves could also do with just a little bit extra detail, I think. What I've got up here is just a bit of shadow. Just added a little bit more burnt sienna and Payne's grey into that very, very faint mix we were using for the flowers. And I might just sort of add in a gentle bit of shade here and there. You do have to be careful, you don't want to overload it, but it does dry quite a bit lighter. But 
it does help define the shape somewhat of these very round little bell-like flowers. So I'm just going to go through and look for the places where I feel it's a little bit of this detail of low light will work nicely and then we'll be done. And there you have, after just tentative steps with little bits of dilute shadow, a lovely little lily of the valley. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And if you share your work on social media just tag us at De Winton Paper Co on Instagram and I'd love to see your paintings. And of course if you never want to miss another video just hit the subscribe button and that little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye!